My name is Tom Jackson Wood, and I'm based in a town in Hertfordshire. It, it's just about maybe half an hour, 45 minutes out of London. It's called Ware. So, ironically, when Theresa May said, you're either a citizen of what, here or a citizen of nowhere, I was already a citizen of Ware. I just needed out of the nose to it. But yeah, I. This has been a very strange night. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to go next if people are up for it. Yes, okay. Um, cool. So basically, a little bit about me. I'm a filmmaker. Uh, and I'm also a unusual mix of perspectives and yeah there's um even before brexit i was feeling very in terms of the the way that my rights and the benefits i had as a disabled person in this country were being stripped away and then Brexit happened, which was effectively the same thing happening again, but on a much greater magnitude. And I was reflecting on this about maybe six months ago. And literally the first general election I could vote in was in 2010. And I have not, I'm not a conservative. I'm literally every single election I have been unrepresentative, the, both on the local level and the global level. And so I feel incredibly uh, shut off and isolated from my own country. Um, and, I, and I really do worry now what happens next. Um, a little bit about me in terms of how I got involved in Europe and the Europeans while at university, I was mindful that there was a story in, in going on in Europe that people in the UK didn't hear much about. This was back in like 2011, 2012. Um, and so I got involved with a group called uh, Young European Movement UK, um, which is um, the junior branch of the European Movement UK. Um, and through the Young European Movement, I was able to travel to a, many other places in Europe that I wouldn't have been able to go by myself. Um, partly due to the access reasons and partly due to the cost reasons. Um, and it, it meant that you know, I was able to go to places in Germany, in Hungary and Norway, three countries that I had never been to or had been to once in a German exchange in the case of Germany, but that was when I was, when I was at school. And that was really it. But from that, it, it planted the seed. And even to this day when I'm when I've been abroad in Europe, in other parts of Europe, when I haven't done on a, on a seminar trip, um, I've always felt going there with a purpose and actually being able to explore it on a much deeper level, rather than just, you know, going to the beach and lying on a, on a beach towel for a week, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but that's, there's more to it than that. And that's what young European, young European movement allowed me to do. Um, so, you know, when I think a lot of, oh, hang on. Yeah, so that's kind of my background. And from there, what happened was that I was busy making a film, but it was taking a long time to make, and it wasn't about Brexit, but Brexit was really weighing down on the back of my mind because of this. 
And in particular, I was worried about what it, what Brexit would mean for the Good Friday Agreements in Northern Ireland. Um, because I'd studied the history of Northern Ireland in, at university, at, at school in um, A-levels. And I was mindful of what happened with the troubles, the sectarian violence and the fear and, uns and distrust and uncertainty. And that had been, if not brought to a close, but had definitely been reached, a historic peace treaty had been reached between the governments of the UK and the Republic of Ireland in 1998, it's called the Good Friday Agreement or the Belfast Agreement. And in 2018, there was the talk about the DUP being in, in, co in a conference and supply agreement with Theresa May in the, cap in, 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 uh, the government. But even then, there was very little news about what Brexit would do to the, the Good Friday Agreement in Northern Ireland and the potential knock-on effects. Um, and this is where I, I, I spoke to, to new, new Europeans because in August 2018, I was I came up with this idea to craft fund a documentary film, a short documentary film that I managed to get interest from the the very well-known campaigner Madeleine Kay, known as the EU Supergirl. And I thought, yes, I think we could make something of this because this is a big issue, but if we can find a way to explore these issues and tell it in a way which is interesting, informative and entertaining, where people can learn something, but it's not dull. And, and then I went, I went to Northern Ireland in August 2018. Um, and bear in mind, number one, and wheelchair. Number two, I'd never been to Northern Ireland before. Number three, I got, to, I got to film the equipment with me and I was filming stuff. And it was really an initial recce, look around, get an idea of the feeling of Belfast and what has happened. And while I was there, I managed to get in touch online with Roger Gazal of New Europeans. And from him, he put me in touch with Eileen Chan, who, who is the if I get this correct, she is the one of the trustees of New Europeans Ireland, and she is an amazing person in terms of working within Northern Ireland civil society, because this was because of historical reasons uh, and differences. The civil society of Northern Ireland is still quite fractured along. Um, British identity lines, whether people see themselves as Irish or British or Unionists, as in Northern Ireland remain with the UK, or nationalist in the sense that they reunite with the Republic of Ireland. Um, and really it was a sense of 2018 was coming up. It was the 20th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement in 1998. And nobody, at least in mainland Britain, was making really any news about it. And this was, bear in mind, the most important peace treaty in British history in recent years at least and people just took it for granted and that and that isn't even to do with Europe or Brexit but it was then I realized that how little so many people in Britain know of their own history both the good and the bad parts of it and while making this documentary, I was very keen to um, reach out to people from all different sides within Northern Ireland. Um, and through New Europeans, I happened to meet Eileen Chan Hu and Jane Morris, and also Conor McArdle, who um, was deputy coordinator for New Europeans Ireland. And being able to meet with them was really exciting. And through Eileen as well, I was able to meet an amazing uh, woman called Linda Irvine, who is teaching 
should we say, is she's providing a way for unionists in Northern Ireland to learn the Irish language if they want to, in a way which detaches it from um, Irish republicanism. Because in Ireland and Northern Ireland, um, the Irish language has been traditionally um, associated with Irish republicanism. This is due to the 1960s Easter Rising, and when the Republic of Ireland broke, um, became independent from the UK in 1922, uh, that was when the border went up, um, they, the Irish Free State moved heavily to a policy of the Irish language it was, as a way of putting difference between them and the United Kingdom. So in Northern Ireland, which is still part of the UK, but a large, uh, a large fraction of the population of Northern Ireland would like to be in the Republic of Ireland. This is pre-Brexit. And Brexit has only entrenched those divisions further. But what Linda was doing is finding a way to, to kind of break that, bridge that divide between the language and identifying as an Irish national rather than as a British national. The, the fact is that identity in Northern Ireland is still quite um, a touchy subject and Brexit again has just opened a can of worms again. So that again was to me a really fascinating piece of history which nobody knew about. So I went out and made it and interviewed Linda and Connor and Jane, and also a, a man called Brian Maguire, who is a journalist based in Brussels, but he is from Belfast, but I, identifies as an Irish national. Again, this, this shows you how complicated layers of identity can be in Northern Ireland, but also is quite similar to perhaps the way how in the UK people can feel British, European, English, or not, or European and Scottish, but not British, or European, Welsh, and maybe British, but not. So it's, it's a real complex uh, structure. And this is really what is happening with Brexit it is, it is, I come to realize that in a way, the EU was like a force of stability which held the different peoples within the UK together. And I think the first trend of that we saw was in 2014 with the Scottish independence vote. And one of the criteria that was on the Better Together campaign for Scotland to remain part of the UK is the United Kingdom would remain an international power and part of the European Union two years later the UK changed its mind and the Scots are not happy because that was not what they were promised in the 2014 referendum. So again, I'm, I'm seeing at least in the 2010s, the EU was actually one of the, think of it as the glue which was holding the UK together and also keeping the peace in Northern Ireland and, and keeping good relationships with the South. So this was really um, stuff that I, I felt people weren't hearing about. So I went out and made this film. And then that was one part of it. The other component then, because of the urgency around it, there was the, in December 2018, there was a big um, anti-Brexit campaign run by EU Flag Mafia. Now EU Flag Mafia, are a very um, ardent pro-European pressure group. But unlike new Europeans, the new EU flag mafia is more about um, street action in peaceful ways, but about being, you know, these are people who hang out off European flags off bridges. They organized the EU proms in the park um, flag hands out. And, in December 2018, uh, they organized and crowdfunded and ran the Bollocks to Brexit bus tour. The Bollocks to Brexit campaign 
was a very effective uh, sticker campaign, um, which called effectively called out Brexit for being a lot of nonsense. Because um, if we look at what was being promised in the 2016 referendum, the Brexit that was promised, and then look at the Brexit now we have, there is a huge difference. And up until now, it's been abstract. People are only just beginning to realize the knock on effects of what Brexit will actually mean. And the coronavirus in a way is almost pushed this, almost like pushed the Brexit question into another more, another situation. You know. So to wrap it up quickly, um, final point is that we finished the film. I went on a big bus across the UK, Ireland and Belgium, filmed Jane, Brian, Linda and Connor and Madeleine Kay and Fobo Joe, Drew Galdron, fantastic performer. We put that all into a film with the help of my amazing friend, Spygo Hanlon, and we were able to get it into the European Short Film Festival, which is based in Berlin, Germany, but because of COVID was happening online. And we were able to win Best Documentary and an Audience Award. And that has really been my hope, is that the work I'm doing will help lay the groundwork for the future.